work something out. <laughs> Elisa says backups. What's that? Yeah, that, that, yes, I need to learn more about that. The hams have their own data network, he says. Elisa says backup systems are in place, otherwise she will cut hair. <laughs> okay, so I put in there like, what if there's a robot uprising? And th somehow that made it into like the tagline for it. And I'm like, oh, now I have to actually figure out what would happen if there's a robot uprising. And like, you know, what if like there's, we have like a Terminator type situation or like what was AI or, uh, or what was that movie with the, the kind of like white robots that went after Will Smith? iRobot. No, what if that happens? Of course, then you have to befriend the old robots and make them, yeah. Um, we'll probably be the robots. I think actually in doing research for this, there's so much insanely cool stuff about uh, cybernetics out there. And personally, I want like a little display readout uh, or just colors. I'd be happy with three embedded LEDs that basically like say like you've had too much sugar, you're going to get diabetes. Red, red, red. Yeah, let's get on that. <laughs> okay, so I think the first thing to do is just take them apart. Um, if you have young people in your life, just get them screwdrivers instantly. <laughs> yeah, really. And then make them take apart your VHS machine. And then your DVD machine. And uh, so this is a project that I guess came out of here, actually. This little pocket EMP. It's uh, you take a disposable camera, and you take a piece of wire, and instead of shooting all that electricity to the flash, it shoots it to the wire that's wound up. And this creates an electromagnetic burst. And so um, if you don't want your friends to be able to get into work anymore and they have low frequency RFID tags, it doesn't work on the high frequency ones, you can just pop this, you won't, they won't even, yeah, you just pop it over their card and it won't work anymore. Or you could put it over a robot and they would cease to function. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one of the interesting things about searching so this is a model of how an EMP thing, uh, EMP works. So really interesting. Um, so I'm looking for all like, uh, one of the ways you can make an EMP is with a microwave and it works and it's pretty powerful. And uh, there was this like 14 year old kid who was like, mom, can I make an EMP out of her old microwave? And the mom was like, yeah, sure, honey. <laughs> yeah. And so he did and uh, it caused some problems. You know him. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's so cool. So in doing this research, I realized one of the things that you see a lot of is that a lot of people, a lot of these, a lot of what comes up are all these technical specifications for military use. And it turns out that in a worst case situation, like, this is almost worse than the internet's not, not working, would be like if all of a sudden somebody went down the street with giant EMPs and, and I mean, what if somebody came by with an EMP and like blasted the hell out of this building? Um, that would suck. <laughs> so we need Faraday cages. <laughs> How long am I doing for time? I'm okay? Okay, good. Okay, so the way Faraday work, cages work, they're really cool. So like, he can actually, yeah, I mean, that looks really dumb. <laughs> but there's these really cool laws of um, elect electricity that uh, the electricity actually travels, he's got this cage grounded, and the electricity travels on the outside of it. And uh, I've seen a few people do this. And, um, not me, I want one. But the other thing is that you can use this at, uh, to, um, to like safeguard your stuff. So on my list of things to do 
is to actually get one of my hard drives and use that as an actual like, okay, this is the stuff that I really need in the apocalypse hard drive. And, <laughs> and put it in a metal box and then take a wire to that metal box and a big uh, copper rod and you know, make it so that it's waterproof and put it in the backyard and drive the rod into the ground. So if there is an EMP, like one of the major places you can find an EMP is if there's like a nuclear blast, of course. And if there is a nuclear blast that happens, I want my data safe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you got your own shit kit. Again. Okay, so um, I feel like that was more I wanted to say about Faraday cages, except they're really cool. So I'll, you can just research that if you like. So things I want to make but really don't know how. So this is kind of like my wish list of things I should have put on this, but. Um, so I want a better way than ham radio to stay in touch, or I want to get actually the ham radio thing working, and I want it to be easier, like kind of like the way, I don't know, yeah. I really, uh, so night vision, totally possible. I guess you can just use a flashlight, but it's not green. <laughs> I guess you could have a green flashlight, but yeah. So social engineering skills, I need, I've heard, I got a recommendation to read this pretext book, which is a CIA book. I've read, I just want, I just actually need more practice. So um, if you can think of something else that I should make before or after the end of the world, let me know. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't know if there's really any questions you can ask me, but if you ask them, I'll, 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 I'll say words afterwards. <laughs> oh, yes. You know what? Here, just come up here, because you're awesome. <laughs> Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> So um, there's actually a great series of books that were published by a book, uh, a great series of books published by a school just outside of the Appalachian Mountains in the U.S. called the Fox Fire Books. They're absolutely great and they have a bunch of skills listed like this, like their skills on how to kill a deer that you found or how to make a banjo out of a gourd. It's absolutely fantastic and they're Books that I would want in the apocalypse, definitely. What's your name? I'm Mariah. Mariah. <laughs> Thank you. Interesting history on the Foxfire books. It, they were started by this teacher who went to go teach in the mountains. And they gave him these books to teach the kids. And the kids were like, shut up. And so he's like, oh, let's do something relevant. Go ask your parents what, what's cool and how, what they did that is going away. And they actually made six giant books that document 12. <laughs> so I have some collecting to do. Um, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the next talk. I hope you'll all stay here. And uh, good night. <laughs>